Hello everybody, in today's video uh, I'm going to be playing as France and I'm going to be playing with historical AI focuses off. And uh, the main reason I'm going to do this is because with France we are going to uh, do the Franco-Spain or the Bourbon uh, part of the focus tree and usually in historical you don't get the Carlist uprising. However, this will make it quite challenging. But first I'm gonna, you know, manage my armies, um, start researching the research bonuses and everything, and uh, start construction. So yeah, let us begin. And now that pretty much everything is set up, uh, we just need to start the game, pretty much. And uh, yeah, we also need to assign our generals some traits, or generals some traits and whatnot. Right, and in this first part, uh, as I was saying before, we are going to be bringing the monarchy back first, and so that's going to mainly just be some national focuses. But I'm also going to show off, uh, you know, what happened due to uh, us turning off historical, and you know, weird thing, the. Uh, so basically a pro-Italian Ethiopia rose up against Ita uh, Ethiopia itself, uh, German Civil War, that is pretty standard. Um, and mainly with the focuses for right now, we're trying to get down to revise the constitution, and then I'm going to do some develop the metropole, and I think develop Algiers. And that will get us a couple of extra factories, and then I'm going to stop once we get the uh, new research slot from all of that. Uh, since then, that will start our, uh, our path to actually restoring the monarchy and trying to get our guy on the throne of Spain. Oh yeah, also with Italian Civil War, so that's a thing. And then the uh, Polish uh, had their own civil war, and I think usually for me, the uh, peasants don't actually win, but this time they did. 
So that was a little interesting. Uh, it didn't really mean much later in the game, as uh, you'll see. I'm not going to mention what happens, but it's probably kind of obvious. <laughs> Uh, but now, Carlos Spain has risen up in the Spanish Civil War. We got switch over to free trade, and since it's just beneficial uh, economically. And we're still waiting to go monarchist, but we have now just finished uh, the research slot. So that means that we can, since revise the constitution has been finished, we can rep repeal the law of exile. Uh, and get the Bourbons back in power in France. And there is a little bit of a civil war in uh, the Soviet Union. They don't really do much though. Uh, I thought it was going to be kind of an interesting game with that, but that didn't happen. Some other stuff did, though. And the German Empire is back. I thought maybe they would do democracy, but it didn't look like they would. Uh, so that does mean that we will be fighting the central powers this game. And now we have uh, gotten the monarch back in power. And now we just need to do the legitimate heir. And uh, then that means that we're going to have to be involved in the Spanish Civil War, which will take a couple more focuses to for us to be able to join that. Uh, since I think it takes 50% world tension for you to be able to join a faction member's uh, civil war. So yeah. And to kind of get that started, uh, well, I guess first that I, I took an economic focus. At least that's what I was thinking I was going to do, but we have to do intervention in Spain in order to actually join the war early and make sure that the Carlists actually win. And also make sure that we get Corazon, the whole of Spain. And now with intervention in Spain, we just have to uh, give them some arms. I'm also going to start rearmament for the extra focuses. I mean, not focuses, military factories. Uh, sorry, it's taking me a bit to decide which one to do because I was just reading, you know, what they do. I am recording this audio in post, but that's kind of why there was a little bit of a pause from uh, me in the game. But if you do one of the intervention type things, you can then usually you can then choose which side you're going to help and then you can join the war. And now it is time for the war.
Hello, hello, hello. Uh, we have finished uniting the French and Spanish thrones. So now it is time for us to start preparing it to fight the central powers. And for that, I'm going to start training some new divisions, mainly division, I think it's the infantry or something like that. Um, and we're going to try to get like a full army group. And then we're also going to train some colonial garrison to, well, literally, uh, garrison our colonies in Africa just to uh, make sure that we don't lose the factories in like Algeria and stuff. And of course, we are going to also start building up a lot of military factories. And that is mainly so we can actually start producing uh, medium tanks, which I rarely ever do, but this is France, so it's going to be uh, quite hard to survive. Uh, so we're going to start producing medium tanks and also, uh, obviously, airplanes, which I wish I had actually done sooner in the game, but they did still help out quite a lot. And uh, now we also... I also tried to get, like, uh, information on my neighbors, on what focuses they were doing, basically so I knew who was going to attack me and when. And um, also to find out what was going on in the UK and, well, uh, the British Empire is coming back. They're having a whole civil war there. A lot of civil wars in the, this uh, this time around. But now for national focuses, I'm mainly just going to try to get rid of our debuffs that we start out with since we're the victors of the First World War and some of the uh, employment debuffs you get as well. Oh yeah, and Mexico is really gonna, it's gonna be really cursed this game. Uh, a lot of things are gonna be pretty cursed actually. And the uh, British are going to be pretty aggressive this game since they did go down the fascist path. And we're mainly just going to try to defend ourselves because uh, we're going to have quite a lot on our plate already. And uh, something weird is going to happen with Ireland. Maybe it's something that people have already seen, but I'll talk about it whenever we get there. And also a really weird Indian Civil War where Pakistan is actually kind of winning and India decides to revolt against itself and then it gets into a three-way Civil War. And in, in classic German fashion, Germans invade Poland and they also start to invade uh, the Dutch. And so this was kind of my cue to uh, kind of realize, oh, they're probably going to invade me soon, considering that it is part of the focus tree. Sorry if you heard that, that was my dog. So uh, I started to uh, look at training even more divisions in order to, uh, you know, have a better defense and mainly to have uh, troops that will be set on fallback lines because uh, I did not build forts. Um, 
In the north, I decided to spend most of my time building military factories. Maybe building forts in the north was a better decision, but um, I usually like to go with uh, spamming out factories and then eventually finding a defensive line around Paris or uh, maybe just a little bit south of Paris. And we can also uh, do our focuses to get even more factories by developing the colonies and then uh, there's a focus that gives you a bunch of factories at that. And here is my airplane design, my fighter design if anybody's interested. Uh, so you can go back and pause that and see what it is. And Pakistan wins the Indian Civil War and takes territory from the uh, old Indian government. Ireland loses to the British Empire but somehow gets Northern Ireland. Not exactly sure how that works. Yeah, very, very weird game so far. Oh yeah, and then British Empire also joins uh, the Japanese faction, so... <laughs> yeah. And now the Germans invade Belgium, which means we're next. And so begins the great defense against the Central Powers, which is actually a lot larger than you think it'd be. Like a bunch of other random countries like Sweden stuff joined it, so it's actually a little harder than the base game would be, especially since it seems to take the Germans quite a while. Especially since it seemed to take the Germans quite a while to actually declare war on us, and so we aren't able to wear them down as much by this time, and they're a little bit stronger whenever they uh, declared war on us. And also it's going to take them quite a while to declare war on the Soviet Union, so we're going to be all our own, on our own, uh, basically fighting most of Europe by ourselves. And uh, yeah, it... It's pretty difficult. I think I named this chapter like the darkest hour or something. So yeah, it, it's gonna be be uh, pretty bad, and it looks good for the most part in the beginning. But uh, as I get more divisions on the border, it's gonna start getting pretty bad. So uh, preemptively, I started training like my tank divisions and stuff. But quickly, we're gonna start losing northern France like really badly. Uh, we're not taking a huge amount of losses, but I mean, we're losing those factories and stuff. And I didn't plan on losing it as fast. Uh, and we didn't actually end up having to send some, like, quickly deployed divisions to defend the Italian border. Um, I overestimated how strong the Italians would be, uh, because they never ended up actually getting to that river. <laughs> So I had those divisions set there for no actual reason, because, yeah, uh, they, they probably could have helped more on the German front, but you know. Uh, but you know, now Germans pretty quickly pushed to around Paris, and I decided I needed to redo the front line. And I think this kind of caused the Germans to get a little bit of a breakthrough once again, which is was not what we needed. And they started marching. Well, we'll see in a second. And yeah, so that little reorganization of the army, I still think it was worth it to do because uh, our troops weren't really evenly uh, split out, but it did allow it to the Germans making some pretty big breakthroughs, and they took Paris, which uh, that's a lot of manpower to lose, and that's a lot of factories to lose. But luckily, my airplanes are a lot better than theirs. 
So I was able to start shooting down a lot of their airplanes, uh, which would over time weaken their offensive by quite a lot. Even if we're not able to outnumber them in the air, we're at least able to take down a lot of their planes. Meaning that they can't do as much um, bombing and like close air support and everything. But this doesn't stop the AI from doing even more uh, pushes. I don't think I've had this much trouble with the German AI for quite a while as France, so it was actually kind of fun. Uh, it's kind of like that feeling whenever you don't know how to play like the Soviet Union or something, and so you just rely on, you know, eventually the Germans will get weak enough to where they can't push because they're going to declare war on everybody. But we started needing to just deploy even more divisions just to make them at least have a second thought before they did large offensives. And then they broke through pretty badly again uh, around like Orleans, I think. And they just started pushing really, really far and deep into the territory. Far deeper than I thought they would. But luckily, uh, we are going to get the tanks deployed pretty soon. And so in the meantime, I just keep spamming out like not great uh, infantry divisions just to try to hold the line uh, but yeah it's pretty difficult but saving the race Germans declare one so union and I I could have won without them doing that but makes it a lot easier I wasn't sure when they were going to declare war on them because it was starting to get pretty late in the game by the time they did that. But now, the tanks march forward. And now we are going to retake Paris. Sorry if I repeat some sentences, I'm recording this in chunks just so it's uh, easier to fix like mistakes and stuff, but pretty much we're just going to go full on. Uh, encircling them with their tanks and everything while they uh, for the most part stop attacking us because they're trying to take down the Soviets and so we get some pretty nice encirclements as you will see but before we get to the big encirclement we're basically just kind of a little like time-lapse montage of uh, our tanks just taking some territory so hope you enjoy that and a little time-lapse montage of the offensive beginning. And as we make a pretty big breakthrough with our tanks, uh, we're able to get a huge encirclement and we actually get another one of these and this just makes Germany quite a pushover. Uh, the main issue really, uh, as we get later into this war, is um, really just manpower. Um, I wasn't really checking how many casualties we were taking and I don't think I got the conscription law that that high. So we didn't have much manpower, but we were just absolutely destroying them. Uh, and they didn't even seem to be doing that well on the front with Soviets as uh, they didn't really even get to Stalingrad, I don't think, or like around it, I mean. And so on to the next part.
Phoenix Rises. Um, honestly, I, I feel like that last like cutout was kind of funny, so I might keep that in. Uh, hope you're not annoyed by it, but I, I thought it was just a little funny how it cut off like that. Uh, it wasn't intentional, but now we're going to start just taking territory. We are going to destroy the central powers until something pretty big kind of stops us. But I'll get to that whenever we get to that. Have fun uh, watching the offensive kind of just go by really quickly. Uh, I, I just think people enjoy these little time loss parts because... I mean, it's map painting. That's kind of part of the whole point of this game. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I just think it looks cool. Oh yeah, man. Uh, I decided to do the skin, uh, just reorganizing the army a little bit, uh, just so you know I can keep track of where things are going, instead of it being like six different uh, front lines.
And now, with the capitulation of Germany, the war with the Central Powers is pretty much over. But I do want to uh, talk about a couple of things, because as you're going to notice soon, um, pretty much the rest of the world just randomly declares war on us. And at the end of this video, we're not going to deal with it. But, if, uh, you know, I see that people kind of want me to continue it, and I'll do like a poll. Uh, because I know not everybody watches until the end, of course. Um, if I see that people want me to continue uh, this war, or I guess like this, basically this war against the world that everybody declared war against me, um, I will uh, continue it in a stream next week, probably, if people want to see that. And I, I imagine people will. So, while, yes, uh, the war isn't technically over, we don't technically have a peace deal, we did just like completely dominate the Central Powers. Uh, but yes, I will be finishing this war, most likely, uh, in a stream, if people want it. And I think it'll be a pretty fun stream. But I just wanted to have that in there. Um, and I wanted to add it in there before I ran out of time to talk. So... And while I kind of try to like at least secure my western fronts, that's what I do uh, before the video ends, uh, I want to like talk about... Uh, just, just like normal outro stuff. So, if you like this video, obviously leave a like. If you uh, have some criticisms or, you know, you just want to show your support, maybe leave a comment about it. And if you really like this video and you want to see more content like this, subscribe. Also, let me know um, how you like this new audio setup. I'm using DaVinci for it instead of the usual audio software. Um, just to see if there's a difference. Anyways, I will see you all later. And bye bye. Video will end after uh, Haley capitulates and some stuff. But yeah, bye.